Chris Kreider makes a brutal mistake that cost the Rangers dearly in a 4-2 loss against the Winnipeg Jets. Plus, will Matt Rempe be back in the lineup on Thursday against the Bruins? You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1030 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And, of course, today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. So the Rangers come up short against the Jets in a game where I think probably the biggest story of the whole thing as far as why the Rangers lost the game is most likely Connor Hellebuck. I thought the Rangers really came out flying in this game. This game had great pace basically right from the jump. And the Rainers honestly could have been up very easily, one nothing, 2 nothing at that first intermission there. But Connor Hellebuck, who you know very well could win a Vesna this year, played like it. He was excellent. Uh, the Panarin line alone, those guys must have created six, seven, eight you know, medium to high danger scoring opportunities in this game. And they didn't even play the whole game together. There were, you know, lines being mixed and matched in the third period. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in today's episode as well. Um, But I wanted to start off with another pretty big storyline from this game. And that's the fact that it appeared that Chris Kreider lost some ice time in the third period of this game. Uh, Per a tweet from Vince Mercagliano, uh, Kreider apparently only had two shifts in the first nine minutes of the third period. And of course he ended up out there with Will Cooley and Alex Wenberg after LaViolette juggled the lines at the start of the third period. But it's not really easy to see why this happened because Kreider made a mistake that you really can't defend at a critical point in the game that led to the Jets boosting their lead from two to one to three to one. This happened late in the second period. You know, Rangers were down one nothing. They tied it at 1-1, all in the second period, by the way. And then they're down 2-1 to after a power play goal by the Jets, but still very competitive game, the kind of game that, you know, you feel watching it could certainly uh, still go either way. You know, you've got just good competitive hockey, two very good teams, two first-place teams, uh, both goalies putting on a show, making some really good saves. Uh, as I mentioned before, I thought both teams had some good jump in this game. And the Rangers had the possession of the puck in the offensive zone. You've got Schneider sending the puck around the boards, behind the net, and up the left side. Uh, Miller finds the puck, makes a nice little pass to Kreider. Now, when Kreider receives this pass, he receives it with his back toward the Winnipeg net, and his momentum is kind of carrying him toward the blue line. But still, you know, he's got plenty of room to operate here, and he kind of just nonchalantly turns around. I don't know if he just didn't expect Mark Shifley to be there, just didn't notice him, just didn't really feel him there, what the deal was. Maybe he thought he had a little bit more time than he did, but uh, Kreider not exactly, you know, making a move here with a lot of pace, a lot of urgency. He turned around, like I said, very nonchalantly. And as he's doing this, Mark Shifley pokes the puck away from Kreider. It goes into the neutral zone. Shifley, you know, he's already facing that way and, you know, he, he knows where the puck is. So he attacks it, picks it up for a breakaway and goes in and scores on Igor Shesterkin. Shot the puck a little bit earlier than I thought he might, maybe earlier than Igor thought that he might. But either way, uh, he shoots and scores and makes it 3-1. to And I also have to point out here, Kreider was not exactly busting it on the back check here. He kind of looked dejected after Schleifele had stolen the puck from him. I mean, I guess you could argue that, you know, he wasn't going to be able to catch up to him and prevent the breakaway anyway. But you never know. I mean, there could be a a rebound there. And maybe one of Schleifele's teammates is is there. And he picks it up. And he's got a chance to score. So not good at all uh, for Chris Kreider here. He's got to be, I mean, I feel like I'm saying the obvious, but he's got to be a heck of a lot more alert here, uh, more dialed in than he was on this play. Again, this is a dogfight of a game, you know, back and forth, both teams battling. There's good players on on both sides and uh, two teams that are certainly going to be in the Stanley Cup playoffs and looking to make a deep run and perhaps even win the whole thing. And like I said, you know, the Rangers were down by a goal at this point, but it was certainly still anybody's game. And once this goal was scored by the Jets, I felt like it kind of, took the wind out of the Rangers' sails at least a little bit. Now, they had a rally late in this game. They made it very interesting in the final few minutes. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. 
but there was kind of a lull after this for the Rangers. You know, the rest of the second period, I mean, there wasn't that much time left, but the rest of the second period, you know, they kind of looked like they were, you know, not really uh, at that same level that they had up to that point in the game. And for parts of the third period, I thought that was also the case. Again, Laviolette did mix the line combinations, but the Rangers didn't really get off to a great start at the beginning of the third period either. And um, again, it all kind of started. It all went south for the Rangers or mostly went south for the Rangers after this, you know, inexcusable miscue by Chris Kreider here. And I feel like whether it's on this podcast, whether it's just, you know, Ranger fans, all of us, you know, talking, whatever the case might be, whether it's, you know, beat writers, social, everybody is spending entirely too much time. And it's not our fault. It's just the hand that's been dealt us. We're all spending too much time having to worry about Chris Kreider and Mika Zibanejad. You know, what's exactly going on there and why can't these guys score at 5v5 hockey and who should be the right winger and, you know, why don't they have that extra gear on certain nights? You know, some nights they do, but some nights they don't. There's too many nights where they just don't. Uh, should they be broken up? All this stuff on and on and on and on here. And, you know, Kreider and Mika are not the players that you're supposed to be worrying about at this point in the season. And, and we're not supposed to be you know, going through all these questions and uh, weighing all these options as far as different things that can be done to get them going. They're supposed to be the guys that get other players going. You know, they're they're supposed to get, you know, with a take Panarin, for example. Everybody that plays with Panarin, whether it's a all-star caliber player or somebody that is typically a bottom sixer. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. We've seen so many different forwards play with Artemi Panarin since he's gotten to the Rangers, and every single one of them get that bump. With Kreider and Mika, there's two of them there. And they're not giving each other that bump, and they're not giving whoever the right winger is that bump either. Uh, they need to be better than this. I don't want to overdo it either because, you know, this is what's largely been considered uh, at least a little bit of a down season for both Kreider and Mika. And even with that being the case, Chris Kreider right now has 64 points in 69 games. Uh, he recently had an excellent game against the Penguins. Uh, Mika Zibanejad, 58 points in 68 games. These are down seasons for these two guys. But it's still fair to critique because I, I think, you know, they're they're capable of doing so much more than this. And there's just certain nights where it just doesn't feel like they're locked in all the way or whatever it might be. One idea that I'll throw out there, which to me is kind of off the wall a little bit, and I'm not even sure how much I believe this to be the case. And even if it is the case, I certainly don't think I would agree with it. I'm going to float the possibility here, though, of – is it possible that Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider both know the Rangers are going to the playoffs? They've both been, you know, through the gauntlet of, of Stanley Cup playoff hockey. You know, Kreider's been to the Eastern Conference Final or deeper, I want to say at least four times. Uh, Mika Zibanejad was obviously there for the Rangers the most recent run to the Eastern Conference Final two years ago. Chris Kreider for his career, 107 Stanley Cup playoff games. So is it possible that these two guys know just how taxing and how brutal and, and how how much of a dogfight the Stanley Cup playoffs can be. And is it possible that they're keeping just a little bit something in the tank for said Stanley Cup playoff games? Again, I don't think that's the case. And even if it was the case, I wouldn't agree with that because you can't be going, you know, not full bore when all your teammates are. But I'm just kind of tossing it out there as a possibility. I just kind of want to put it into the atmosphere. And you guys can let me know what you think if that's at least possible because you know, this is what it comes down to eventually. You know, you start kind of grasping at straws and, why aren't these guys as locked in as, as we've seen them be in the past? You know, what, what exactly is happening there? And this is what you're left with. You're, you're left with what I'm doing right now, just kind of throwing out an idea and wondering if maybe, just maybe, that could be the case. I'm not really sure. But something else about Kreider in this game, you know, I, I said that he lost some ice time. I wouldn't call it like a true blue benching because, you know, he was out there in the third period and he was out there with the game on the line in the final minutes with the Rangers down by two goals and actually had a heck of a shot at redemption with about 30 seconds to go. We're going to discuss that whole bunch of other stuff as well in just a second here. First, though, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On for $20 off. 
Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. Uh, for the everydayers, we have one more episode this week, and the Rangers are back in action Thursday against the Bruins. So uh, our next episode will cover whatever happens in that game. I should also mention I'm going to be away for the weekend. There's a slight possibility that we will not have a fifth episode uh, this week, but I think I should be able to you know get that recorded and, and send it out for you guys. So uh, we will have um, that episode most likely coming uh, either Thursday night, early Friday, uh, whatever the case might be. But for right now, let's go ahead and break down uh, what turned out to be a thrill a second finish uh, in this game. Rangers are down three to one late against the Jets here. And we saw not too long ago that the Rangers cannot be counted out in situations like this because they played the Islanders in that outdoor game. It's a wild back and forth game, high scoring, overtime, heroics, the whole nine yards. Uh, the Rangers in that game were down by two goals late. They pull Igor, they score, they pull Igor again, they score again. Panarin, of course, wins it in overtime. And the exact same thing, I, mean, I don't know if Panarin would have won it in overtime, but the first couple of parts of that, almost played out the exact same way here. You get down to three minutes left, 249 to be exact, and Igor is pulled with an offensive zone faceoff uh, forthcoming. The Rangers control the puck. They get a couple of good chances. A couple of shots were blocked as well. Uh, Fox had a shot deflected. It was blocked. And then Lafreniere finds the loose puck, and he buries it with 154 to go. That makes it 3-2. to two. Goal number 20, by the way, for Alexi Lafreniere, a career high. Uh, he continues what has to be considered... I mean, I would say a breakout season. You know, people have different ideas of what a breakout season is. You know, maybe in some people's minds for it to be a real breakout season, he has to be, you know, point per game territory. But uh, for me, yeah, I'm, I'm going to call this a breakout season for Lafreniere. And uh, he comes up with a big goal here and still plenty of time left to potentially get the equalizer. So Igor goes back in. You know, obviously the faceoff is at center ice. Uh, the Rangers get control of it, though. Igor goes back to the bench. The puck goes out of play with a minute and 34 seconds uh, left. You've got a face-off in the offensive zone. The Rangers take their timeout. And then Trocek wins the face-off clean because, of course, he does. Uh, Ranger, and that's such a huge weapon to have in a situation like this. Trocek was winning all these face-offs late in this game. He absolutely dominates the dots. And when you're in a situation like this, whether you're up a goal, down a goal, and especially in the playoffs, to have somebody go out there that you just feel like is going to win every face-off. And, of course, he won't win every face-off. But you love his chances to have somebody in a situation like that that can go out there and do that and make you feel that good about your chances to win a face-off. That's big time. And that's what Trocek, one of many things that he brings to the table. But, anyway, he wins this face-off. Rangers have control. Uh, Kreider was kind of, you know, pulled down a little bit in front of the Jets' net. It looked like maybe a penalty could have been called, but nothing was. Uh, Jets almost get the puck out. Uh, Fox goes down to block it. A nice play by Adam Fox there. Jets eventually do get the puck out of the zone. The Rangers get it back. Great play by Lafreniere here. He's trying to gain the blue line. The Jets are there. They're waiting for him. Uh, he goes in up the left side up the boards, and he takes a check into the boards. You know, a little bit of contact there, but he's able to keep going, able to maintain possession of the puck, and he passes across the ice to Trocek. Trocek quickly moves the puck down low to Chris Kreider. Kreider's moving to the net, and I my arms are already going into the air. It just looked like the timing was there, and we know how good Kreider is in front of the net with these redirections. I mean, it's a little bit different because, you know, Trocek's passing rather than shooting, but you figure this is right in Kreider's wheelhouse, and unfortunately, Kreider not able to put the puck into the net. I mean, it was bouncing on him just a little bit, but I mean, we've seen Kreider score in situations like this many, many times, and I don't know, man. It, it just wasn't Kreider's night. He wasn't able to, to convert here, and... You know, Panarin ends up getting a shot, but Hellebuck makes a save with 32 seconds left. Uh, Mika, after the ensuing faceoff, had a one-timer chance. Hellebuck made the save there. Jets eventually got it out of the zone, and uh, Shafley scored with eight seconds to go into the empty net. At that point, it, it didn't really matter that the empty netter was scored. I mean, the Rangers weren't going to have time to get it back down the ice and get another scoring opportunity anyway, uh, but that was the hat trick for Mark Shifley. And, I mean, hey, you know, they at least made it interesting. They at least did not give up. Uh, the Rangers, you know, it's funny. They're not usually in situations like this where they have to pull their goalie because they do have such a great record. And on top of that, it, it feels like there's games, you know, for a team that's won as much as the Rangers have, it feels like there's games when the Rangers lose. I mean, they lose, and they're not really within striking distance or in all that good of a situation uh, to pull their goalie. You know, if you get down by more than two, you're, you're probably not going to do it. Um, but, you know, when they are in this situation, rare though it might be, it does feel like they 
create some good scoring chances. Obviously, I mean, they've got weapons out there. It's basically the top power play unit plus Lafreniere. There's good puck movement, a lot of different ways that the Rangers obviously can score in a situation like this. And of course, they've got the extra skater out there. So that allows them to usually maintain possession of the puck. And you've got Trocek out there, who I just mentioned. I mean, he's a cheat code when it comes to winning faceoffs. So all that adds up to a team that is dangerous in these situations. And it is nice to see them, you know, battle in the in these spots. We've seen them tie games late a couple of times this year uh, with the goalie pulled. I know for sure Lafreniere, he had one with like 10 seconds left, eight seconds left, something like that earlier in the season that, you know, sent the game into overtime. And I'm going to make a prediction right now. The Raiders... They're going to do this. They're, they're going to pull it off in a situation like this in a playoff game. Now, obviously, when it comes to the Stanley Cup playoffs, you don't want to be in a situation where you're having to pull your goalie all that often for obvious reasons. You're not going to do that unless you're trailing. But I mean, think about it. If you're going to go through four rounds of the playoffs and win 16 grueling, arduous Stanley Cup playoff games, sooner or later, you're probably going to have to win one in, in a fashion like this where you're down by a goal late in the game. You have to pull your goalie, whatever the case might be. Um, and you're going to see a situation where the Rangers are in a spot like this and they come through and they tie the game and send it into overtime. I really do believe that'll happen. They always look good. They always look dangerous when they're in spots like this and they have no shortage of weapons that are on the ice um, when they are down by a goal late in the game. So bank on it now. The Rangers will have a dramatic late goal at the end of regulation of a Stanley Cup playoff game. And again, you don't want to be in this spot too often because obviously that means you're trailing in the playoffs and you don't ever want to be there. But Hey, if you're going to go on a deep run, you're going to have to win a game like this probably sooner or later. And I do think the Rangers are more than capable and more than up to the challenge of coming through in a spot like this. So keep an eye on that once the Stanley Cup playoffs uh, begin. Anyway, we're going to keep everything rolling in just a second here. I want to shift our attention to Matt Rempe. It does sound like he's going to be working back into the lineup on Thursday against the Boston Bruins. Uh, we will talk about him. Also talk a little bit about Chad Ruedel's New York Ranger debut. Got a couple of quotes from Matt Rempe here and uh, a signing by the Rangers of Yaroslav Schmeller, uh, former fifth round pick for the Rangers. He signs his ELC with the team. So we'll get to all that fun stuff in just a second here. First, though, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Also want to let everybody know about the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 feature that you can be enjoying every single day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. Very, very, very good chance that we're going to see Matt Rempe work his way back into the lineup on Thursday night against the Bruins. And I will reiterate what I said before uh, the game last night in our last episode. I was fine with Matt Rempe. Uh, remaining out of the lineup as a healthy scratch. There were a couple of reasons for that, of course. You know, that was his first game back from the suspension. And in no way, I don't want anybody to think that, like, I think he deserves to be punished more. You know, he did his time. He got the four games. I said at the time, I thought that was a little bit high. I was looking at maybe two games or, or three at the most. He got four games, but he did his time. That's not why, you know, I thought that Rempe shouldn't be in. It's just because the Rangers have played very well recently. Uh, specifically, the bottom six was coming off an excellent game. And I just didn't think that the Rangers could, should, or would uh, make any changes to the lineup. Um, you know, Brodzinski was going to be the most likely guy to come out if somebody did, and he had scored a goal on a really nice redirection in the most recent game and has played well in the last two games um, as well. Um, but it does seem like, again, uh, 
you know, Rempe will be back in there against the Bruins based on what happened at practice. And we knew Rempe would get back in there sooner rather than later. But the bottom six at practice a little bit earlier today, uh, the third line left to right was Cooley, Wenberg, Kako. The fourth line was VZ, Goodrow, and Rempe. So Brodzinski no longer on the third line. Uh, will Cooley is there uh, in place of him. That's kind of been fluid between, you know, the two of them moving back and forth between the third and fourth line anyway. But Cooley on the third line and the fourth line, like I said, VZ, Goodrow, Rempe from left to right. And yeah, I mean, that's about what you would expect. VZ had been on the right wing, but he can play both wings. And uh, Rempe slots in there as the right winger for the fourth line. Um, and I'm happy to see Rempe back in there. You know, he does play, obviously, a very physical brand of hockey. He's a very noticeable player. And I think sometimes, I've mentioned this before, the ultimate test here as far as like who should be in the lineup between, you know, Brodzinski or Rempe or anybody else that you think should be in consideration to be the healthy scratch. Look at it from the viewpoint of the opposing team. Which player do you think the Bruins would rather not play for the Rangers during Thursday night's game? Brodzinski or Rempe? They'd probably like to have Rempe out of the lineup. So that being the case, you probably know just from looking at it from that angle that it is a good idea to get Rempe back in there. One thing I do want to mention, though, there's a lot of people criticizing the Rangers for their performance last night because, again, for certain Ranger fans, if you're not 82-0, and actually 96-0, and let's throw the playoffs in there too. If you're not 96-0, and that's not good enough. And, you know, the Rangers going into last night's game were 16-3-1 and in their last 20. They've obviously been playing very, very well and playing with a lot of urgency and just competing hard every single night. Sometimes you get beat. And I think the biggest reason why the Rangers lost that game last night I mean, I talked about the Kreider mistake, and obviously that didn't help. The biggest reason the Rangers lost that game was Connor Hellebuck, the best goalie in the league this year. He was fantastic. Rangers easily could have had a multi-goal lead early in this one. Didn't happen. He stopped 39 of 41 shots and several acts of highway robbery from Connor Hellebuck. Um, Rempe being in the game last night, playing physical, maybe even getting into a fight, would have done almost no nothing as far as uh, the Rangers ultimately winning this game. You can love Rimpy and love his style all you want. And again, I, I do think it's a good thing he's getting back in there on Thursday against the Bruins. But this idea that like Matt Rimpy would have had a hat trick and against Connor Hellebuck and won the game for the Rangers, l let's not go nuts either. Let's, let's not go crazy in that direction um, either. Um, you know, I, I did say in the last episode as well that I thought that a loss against the Jets would probably open the door for Rempe to go back out there. And again, it does seem likely to happen. And it's probably a good thing because you just expect a little bit more trouble uh, when the Rangers are playing the Bruins rather than when the Rangers are playing the Jets. Now, there was some chippiness in this game between the Rangers and Jets. We saw a couple of skirmishes in front of uh, both nets, really, and you know, a couple of get-togethers, but nothing too crazy. Uh, with the Bruins, you know, you basically basically expect there to be some trouble at one point or another. You expect something to happen. But this is what Rempe had to say. You know, obviously he was interviewed today and he's talking a little bit about, you know, the uh, the hit that resulted in his four-game suspension. That's what he had to say about it. It was an accident, but you never want to see a guy get hurt or anything like that. I'm still going to play super hard and play the same way. I'm just going to make sure that my hits are clean. And as far as uh, why he did not fight McDermott in that game against the Devils, he said, I had my instructions. And he actually repeated himself. He said, I had my instructions twice. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, Rempe, the, the one thing I'll say, certainly in his defense, and, you know, something where he's kind of in a no-win situation is, I feel like he's kind of hearing it from both sides. And I'm not just talking about Ranger fans. I'm talking about all hockey fans. Because, you know, Rempe kind of burst onto the scene there. He had his debut in that outdoor game, uh, got into the fight one second into his career. So that kind of put him on the radar of a lot of hockey fans, you know, around the entire league. And he's hearing it from both sides. You know, if he if he fights somebody, it's, oh, he's a goon, and, and that's all he does, and that's all he can bring to the table, which is not true, by the way. Rempe does some other things well uh, additionally, but he does hear it, you know, from that way, that he's just out there looking to fight, and he's fighting for no reason, and on and on and on, right? And then if he doesn't fight, he hears it from other fans, some of the same fans probably, where, oh, he's gutless and he's a coward for not fighting McDermott. And uh, why didn't he fight Ryan Reeves on his first shift of that game? He ended up fighting Reeves later in that game. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's kind of in a no-win situation. He's going to hear it from both sides uh, no matter what he does. Um, so that that's kind of where things stand with Rempe. And as far as uh, him being back in the lineup in place of Johnny Brodzinski, I don't think Brodzinski did anything wrong. We've talked about how that's a feel-good story this year, 30 years old finally becomes an NHL regular. 
But, you know, I just don't know who would, and not even just for this next game, really just going forward, I don't know who would be a healthy scratch on this team in favor of Rempe if it's not going to be Johnny Brodzinski. You know, we, we could float out some ideas. Um, I've seen some people suggest that maybe Barclay Goodrow should be a healthy scratch. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, you know, he is somebody that's well-respected in the locker room. He is somebody that's an alternate captain, one of the leaders of this team. And I thought Goodrow actually played a pretty solid game in this one against the Jets. Um, he had a couple of plays, just the, you know, kind of blue collar plays. He got in the middle of a, a skirmish in front of the Jets net during a stoppage. Uh, there was a, off the top of my head, I can remember a penalty kill for the Rangers where the puck is kind of near the blue line and he comes over and hits his guy and he's battling to get the puck loose. And he eventually does and gets it into the neutral zone. And that actually resulted in a scoring opportunity shorthanded for the Rangers. But I, I thought overall, you know, Goodrow played fairly well in this game. I wouldn't like be completely against the idea of, of Goodrow sitting a game as a healthy scratch. But again, I just don't think it's going to happen um, for all the reasons I just mentioned, you know, well-respected veteran. And, you know, I, I do think that contract talks a little bit. They are paying him, you know, a good amount of money and he is signed for a few more years. And we could talk about a Goodrow trade or a Goodrow buyout in the off season, different topic for a different day for right now, though, you know, Barkley Goodrow is going to be in the lineup on the fourth line. I would say pretty much every single night. And other than him, I mean, who else would even be a candidate to be a healthy scratch among the Ranger forwards besides Brodzinski and Rempe? I mean, I, I guess you could throw Jimmy VZ there, but VZ's played well. You know, he's a good penalty killer, just a gritty player, adds a little bit of scoring punch to the bottom six. I don't think it would be him either. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think you're kind of looking at a situation going forward where it could be Rempe and Brodzinski, you know, kind of alternating on an as-needed basis. The other talking point as far as the lineup coming out of the practice from earlier today is that the Rangers are actually going to uh, apparently, if you go by these pairings, they're going to stick with the same alignment that they went with at the end of last night's game against the Jets. And those alignments were Ke'Andre Miller with Adam Fox, uh, Eric Gustafson with Braden Schneider, and Zach Jones with Chad Ruedel, uh on the third pairing. And I'm fine with that. I mean, they're kind of uh, mixing and matching and figuring out what, what works best here because obviously they're compromised on the blue line. No Ryan Lindgren for a while and no Jacob Truba for at least a couple more games here as well. But I did want to talk a little bit about Rue Weedle. Obviously, he made his Ranger debut, came over at the deadline in exchange for a fourth-round pick. Uh, a couple of good plays from Rue Weedle. You know, there was a play, I think it was the first period. Uh, he put his opponent into the boards and separated him from the puck in the Ranger zone. Wasn't like a bone-jarring hit or anything like that, but he took the body and uh, got the puck loose. And him and Zach Jones held up very well on this shift. You know, the, the Jets really got their forecheck going, but... They held firm and um, didn't allow too many scoring opportunities, despite some pressure from the Jets on that shift. Uh, Ruedel also ended up in a board battle with Morgan Barron. You know, they were going back and forth a little bit later in the game as well. And there was also a play where I thought Ruedel was really cool under pressure. The Jets had two four checkers all over him, and he's got the puck in kind of a tough spot getting near the corner there. And he very calmly you know, gets away from the four checkers, passes the puck, off the boards behind the net and over to Zach Jones on the other side. And, and Jones is all by himself there. So he was able to get the puck out of the Rangers zone. But overall, you know, didn't really stand out that much Did Chad Ruedel. And uh, as we've talked about before, whoever the sixth defenseman is, and God knows we've had a lot of them the last couple of seasons here, but whoever it is, sometimes if you don't notice them a lot, uh, that's not such a bad thing. And as far as Ruedel in this game, uh, zeros across the board, except uh, he did have one shot on goal and did have one hit. Uh, he also had 13 minutes and 31 seconds of ice time, least among Ranger defensemen, but that certainly was to be expected um, given the Rangers' current defenseman alignment. So, so far, so good for Ruedel. Um, I do think certainly he'll probably be the odd man out whenever, you know, probably Truba gets back. We'll see uh, Ruedel take a seat, especially with how well that Zach Jones has played recently. And I would think, you know, guys like Gustafson, guys like Schneider, they're going to probably stay in the lineup. Um, but we'll see how it goes when Truba gets back. Other bit of news here to close out today's episode. The Rangers sign Yaroslav Schmeller to a three-year entry-level contract. Uh, Schmeller is a 20-year-old right winger and left winger. He was a fifth-round pick by the Rangers in 2021, went number 144 overall. Uh, six foot five, 220 pounds. So yet another example of the Rangers, you know, kind of going for size and strength uh, from forwards, you know, late in drafts. We, we've seen it, obviously, with Rempe. Uh, Adam Edstrom was up for a little while as well. And, of course, uh, Yaroslav Chmeller, a big guy in his own right. Um, at Providence College this year for Chmeller, 26 games, 5 goals, 10 assists, also a plus 7. This is his second season at Providence College. 
or was his second season at Providence College. He also played for Czechia's World Juniors team in both 2022 and 2023. And uh, last year, in 2023, uh, won the silver medal there, played in seven games, had three goals and two assists, and was a plus eight. So a strong showing by Schmeller in the uh, the tournament, the World Juniors tournament. And yeah, we'll, we'll see how he does going forward for the Rangers. You know, obviously, uh, if they can hit another late round draft pick, that certainly bodes well for this team going forward. Only other thing I want to throw out there for everybody that thinks the sky is falling, consider again that the Rangers, even after this loss, 16 4 and 1 in their last 21 games, they will be fine. Nobody goes 82 and 0. I can't believe I have to sit there and explain this, but there are certain Ranger fans that just will not accept the fact that this team would ever have the audacity to lose a game. You know who you are. You know, I appreciate you guys tuning in, but you certainly know who you are. Um, yeah, only their second loss in their last 11 home games, they will be just fine. They're going through a gauntlet right now, you know, playing a lot of really tough teams in not a lot of days. It's a good test, you know, before the playoffs here, and uh, we'll see how they do against, uh, you know, another really tough opponent on Thursday in their barn against the Boston Bruins. Definitely looking forward to seeing how the Rangers uh, play in that game. Looking forward to Matt Rempe's return. Um, and, and seeing if they can bounce back from a tough loss here against the Jets. But that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.